Thank you for joining me for another episode in the series on Cebus Porcelain. Boleslaw Cebus was an acclaimed and internationally recognized artist long before he gave his name to the Cebus Studio. In doing so, he founded what would become the most prestigious and longest continuously operating porcelain art studio in the United States. Both his original designs and other decorative works released by the studio have excited and delighted collectors for decades. The many collections within the overall Cebus portfolio continue to captivate art enthusiasts today. Within the numerous categories of content Cebus created, few collections have had as wide an appeal as the sculptures in the Cebus Circus Collection. And I invite you to join me now as we journey under the big top to enjoy the show as only Cebus could present it. Originally introduced in the fall of 1975, the Circus Collection was launched with three entertaining showstoppers that were an immediate success with collectors. As with all collections, new sculptures debuted frequently in subsequent years. Circus as a collection would appear on price lists through 1977. In 1978, the studio combined the circus and carousel categories to streamline the number of collections shown on the studio's official publications. Circus sculptures were now in a new category known as the Carousel Circus Collection. The new collection would contain items from both categories for approximately 12 years until 1989 when the two would be separated and listed as standalone categories once again. This episode will focus exclusively on items specifically related to the Cebus version of The Greatest Show on Earth. For Cebus, creating sculptures with a circus theme meant the content the studio could draw from was wide and the opportunity to appeal to collectors recalling trips to the circus would bring back fond memories of carefree entertainment. With circus content, there seemed to be something for everyone. Clowns, elephants, dancing bears, and prancing poodles were endearing characters that helped collectors recall a time when life was fun. Sculptures ranged from majestic elephants clad in jewels and tapestries to awe-inspiring equestrian performers that made adults think of a time when perhaps they wished that they could join the circus. Let's look at the individual sculptures Cebus created, all of which were designed to bring a smile and at least a few minutes of childlike joy. Circus goers have always expected any show under the big top to have clowns, acrobats, performers, and a myriad of trained animals. Let's start by looking at some of those smaller animals first. These first three guys may have been small compared to their circus mates, but they were huge in winning hearts and demonstrating lots of talent. Monkey Boson was introduced as part of the initial circus group in 1975. Released as an open edition, he was assigned design number 681. Boson measured six inches tall and had a first year introductory price of $150. Boson was the only monkey Cebus created for the circus collection and was available for approximately two years. He was retired in 1977. Seal Sebastian, also issued as an open edition, joined his buddy Boson the following year in 1976. He is five and a half inches tall and is design number 689. Sebastian debuted with a retail price of $135. He was produced for four years, last appearing for sale on the 1980 price list. Our next performer may appear to be better suited in a state or county fair. Percy the Blue Ribbon Pig, another open edition, was assigned design number 6000. Released in 1981, Percy measured five and a half inches tall and had a retail price of $195. An audience favorite in every circus show has always been the clowns. The more clowns, the merrier. Cebus made no exception, offering 10 different clown renditions in porcelain. The first clown Cebus introduced was the iconic child clown head, Funny Face. Released in 1976 as design number 488, Funny Face measured 10 and a half inches tall with a retail price of $225. The funny face clown head would be offered in a total of four variations. Two of those variations were produced as limited edition special event pieces and made available for purchase only to those attending the event. Funny face in green with Daisy was offered during a special event at Reese Pally's art gallery on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 
The Invitation Only Gala was one of the many events during the early 1980s hosted by Pally where attendees had access to purchase unique items available only at the event. The variation is the same size as the original, with the difference being the color and the bow on the child's collar having been replaced with the daisy. The design number for this piece is not known, and it was never advertised or included in any of the studio's catalogs or brochures. The event price for Funny Face in Green with Daisy was likely above $300 based on pricing of the standard version at the time. In 1986, a second limited edition based on the original Funny Face was offered for a special event at the Claridge Hotel and Casino. A special New Year's Eve dinner event held on December 31, 1986 offered Funny Face in Green but with the symbols from the four suits of a deck of cards painted on his face. This piece measures 10 and a half inches tall and like the Reese Pally event piece, the design number is an unknown as well. This limited edition of 300 had no purchase price as it was included as part of the event package. With the introduction of the original Funny Face in 1976, the name listed on all publications was Funny Face Child Clownhead. In naming it Child Clownhead, Sebus deliberately avoided stating whether Funny Face was a boy or a girl. Since the studio never said if Funny Face was a boy or a girl, collectors were left to decide. But by 1985, Sebus had released several child head bust sculptures, each having a companion piece as either a brother or sister. This meant, in order to introduce a companion for Funny Face, it would be necessary to designate him as a boy. Thus, in the fall of 1985, Valentine, a companion piece to Funny Face, was introduced. The caption in the fall 1985 brochure reads, Valentine, companion porcelain to Funny Face, framed in ruffles that little girls love from the world of dress up and make believe. With Valentine's introduction, the Funny Face mystery was solved. Released as design number 5015, she had a price of $335. Valentine measures nine and three quarters inches tall. By the 1990s, the studio began offering the two as a pair at a slightly reduced price as opposed to purchasing them separately. But this isn't the end of the Funny Face story. Prior to Christmas in late 1978, Sebus introduced a fourth variation of the clown child head decorated with holly and berries. This limited release was not published in catalogs or on price lists, but was advertised in a single leaflet style brochure with a price of $325. Officially titled Funny Face with Holly and Berries, he was the same mold and size as the original, but not a numbered limited edition. A companion piece for the Christmas Funny Face was introduced as Valentine with Holly, appearing first on the 1990 price list as design number 5046. She was named Holly Clownhead with a price of $595. At least one special brochure was released with the two Christmas clown heads as a pair. On the 1993 price list, both Funny Face and Valentine were listed under a collection labeled Clown Heads with Holly, sold either individually or as a pair. While Cebus had enjoyed tremendous success with the clown head busts, the studio also presented full body sculptures in circus clown attire. Three clown sculptures were added to the circus collection between 1979 and 1985, with two of those being offered as limited editions. The first full-figure clown sculpture released by the studio was introduced as an open edition in 1979. Rumples, the pensive clown, is seated on a decorated circus riser with a companion circus performer resting on his shoe. In typical clown attire, the seated Rumples is seven inches tall. He was issued with the design number 4014 and had an introductory price of $425. Rumples was only available for two years before being retired in 1981. The second full figure clown sculpture Cebus released was Frollo the Juggler. Introduced in 1981, he was issued as design number 4044. Frollo was a limited issue with a declared edition size of 1000 With an issue price of $750, Frollo was on the high end of the price list for a sculpture of smaller size and minimal complexity. 
This likely led to limited orders, which in turn led to the declared issue being reduced. The highest sculpture number seen on Frollo, offered for sale on the secondary market to date in 2023, is number 386. Therefore, we can assume at least 386 were produced before the piece was retired and edition closed. Cebus released the third and final full-figure clown in the spring of 1985. Titled Jumbles and Friend, this fellow is seated on his clown trunk holding a goose. He was issued as design number 4098 with an initial retail price of $675. He measures eight and a quarter inches tall and was introduced as a limited edition with a declared issue of 750. The full edition was not completed as the studio changed his edition status from being a numbered limited edition to an open edition by the 1988 price list. This was the first time the studio changed an edition status of a sculpture mid-production from a numbered issue to an unnumbered open edition. It is unlikely this was a typo on the price list, as it is repeated in the 1989, 1990, and 1993 price lists. The studio obviously decided to clown around with this sculpture, and did not follow the course of Frollo, where the edition size was reduced, but rather opted to change jumbles from a limited edition to an open edition where new pieces would not be numbered. The jumbles in my collection is number 87. Pieces for sale on the secondary market have been seen with limited edition numbers as high as 196 and 200. Any jumbles found with no number on the bottom would be considered part of the open edition. Therefore, the numbered pieces would be preferable to a collector and perceived to be more valuable. While only three full-body clowns were offered by Cebus, there is still one more clown worth noting even though it was not part of the circus collection. From the Children to Cherish collection, the 1983 version of The Holiday Child depicts a happy tyke holding a Christmas stocking and a toy clown resting next to the child's leg. Even though this is not a circus piece, it does deserve an honorable mention. Perhaps no other animal on earth is as majestic and intriguing as the elephant. These graceful creatures are all inspiring in stature and form. The artists at Cebus created six known elephant sculptures, of which one was assigned to the Carousel Collection, two to the Animal Kingdom Collection, and three to the Circus Collection. The first of the three circus elephants was titled Alexander, He's the Greatest. Introduced as part of the initial circus collection in 1975, Alexander sports a blue tapestry and carries a red ball. He measures seven and a half inches tall and was issued as design number 682. He had an issue price of $195. A variation of this piece was produced briefly with a pink tapestry and carrying a blue ball. A key point to consider on Alexander is the studio attached the ball to the elephant with a clear adhesive. This glue held the ball in place between his tusks and trunk. Unfortunately, due to the minimal amount of surface contact between the three points where the glue was applied, the ball becomes easily detached. Well over 50% of the items sold on the secondary market have the ball detached and usually missing entirely. If purchasing an Alexander, make sure the piece considered has the ball. If missing, the value is 10% or less of current market pricing for a mint condition item. Next in our circus elephant lineup is Phineas. As another star performer, he was named in honor of Phineas T. Barnum, considered the world's greatest showman. Issued in 1984 as design number 6038, Phineas was priced at $325. He is seven and a half inches tall, and like Alexander, the star decorated step below Phineas's foot is attached with an adhesive. The step can become separated easily, and Phineas is also often shown for sale as two pieces. Gentle handling is a must to avoid damage. Our third and final elephant seems to have been drafted into the circus by chance. Willoughby, a baby elephant, appears he would be more at home in the Animal Kingdom collection as he has no decoration to identify him as a circus performer. Willoughby was designed by artist Susan Eaton as one of four baby animals, all produced by Cebus. 
He was released in 1984 as design number 6039 and measures five and a quarter inches tall. He had an issue price of $195. Even though the other three baby animals were assigned to the Animal Kingdom collection, Willoughby appears to have been reassigned to the circus collection by 1988 and remained there for the rest of his production run. For many collectors, a circus just wouldn't be a circus without at least one dancing bear. The artists at Cebus agreed and delivered three options to guarantee bears wouldn't be underrepresented. The studio issued Barnaby in 1975 as the third member of the initial circus introductions. He was assigned design number 686, measured in at 7 inches tall, and had an issue price of $125. Barnaby gave tribute to our nation's bicentennial with 200th painted in gold on his horn to celebrate the anniversary. To further commemorate the event, during the year 1976 only, a special edition Barnaby in white was released in limited quantities. While a white Barnaby is not easily found, they do become available periodically. Barnaby was retired in 1977 and it would be a full decade before the studio would release another bear as part of the circus collection. In the spring of 1987, Bobo the bear was released as design number 6066. Bobo measures four and three quarters inches tall. He had an initial retail price of $225. Obviously dressed in circus attire, he was a welcome addition to the circus collection, but for some odd reason, the studio reassigned Bobo to the Animal Kingdom collection as part of a subcategory named Musical Menagerie. Regardless of later assignments, once a sculpture has been assigned to a collection, most collectors will always associate them with that initial assignment. And Bobo, therefore, will always be a circus bear. Another favorite circus act was the Horse and Pony Show. Ladies in beautiful costumes would command the stately animals to dance, walk on hind legs, and gallop around the ring as they performed acrobatic stunts, riding bareback on their trusted equine partners. The horses often wore costumes and decorations fit for royalty, and the Cebus Circus horses lived up to that standard. The studio created three horse sculptures specifically for the circus collection and possibly had designs for a fourth. Also interesting to note is that all three circus horse sculptures were released as numbered limited editions. The earliest entry was 1976. The performing pony Poppy was introduced as a limited edition of 1,000 pieces. Poppy is six inches tall by nine inches long. Released as design number 691 with a retail price of $325, this edition sold out in three years. It was completed and closed in 1979. It is possible the studio considered releasing the second circus horse sculpture as a horse head bust. Pictures surfaced of a special satin horse head, which was said to have been auctioned in Houston around 1980. It clearly is a variation from the standard issue. The black and white photo shows satin with a circus style ribbon rosette decorated with stars having replaced the pink roses behind the horse's ears. This was likely done to give the piece more of a circus feel and to look closer to the design seen on Poppy. The piece in the picture was either a prototype, possibly considered as a circus entry, or a one-of-a-kind variation created for a customer request. It does make sense the studio horsed around with the idea of making satin a circus piece since Poppy, introduced two years earlier, was wildly popular. A second circus horse entry for 1978 would have done well. Satin was designed by in-house artist Lynn Brown. However, the studio often tweaked, modified, and altered items before releasing them. So after Lynn's design was completed, it's obvious other design options were created and possibly considered. But ultimately, Satin was released as designed by Lynn and placed in the Fantasia collection. But the evidence in the picture proves there was a variation of Satin created, and it may have been with a circus release in mind. The official second limited edition horse sculpture actually introduced for the circus collection was titled Circus Rider Equestrienne Extraordinaire, 
Released in 1979 as an edition of 500, the Circus Rider was an intricate piece with a hefty price tag. Retail pricing was set at $2,775. This price was not out of range for the size and workmanship that went into the piece, but perhaps was perceived by retailers and collectors as being pricey for a circus item. Issued as design number 6001, it measured 13 and a quarter inches tall by 15 and a half inches long. Sales were not as strong as anticipated and the edition size was cut to half on the 1980 spring price list. On the 1981 price list, the edition size was further reduced from 250 to 150 and marked as nearing completion. The studio acted quickly to close this piece out when the orders never materialized beyond those received in the first year. By the fall 1981 price list, Circus Rider was listed as a closed edition and had its first and only modest price increase to $2,950. The third and final circus horse sculpture was a trio of three horses. This particular piece is a bit of a mystery as there never has been a copy for sale on the secondary market. To date, the only evidence supporting the existence of this piece consists of a single thumbnail pic posted on the studio's website in the early 2000s and two price list entries from 1990 and 1993. Enlarging the image results in lost clarity, but it is the best that we can get. The October 1990 price list names the piece Circus Horses Showtime and gives the release date for the next year of 1991. This is the only instance where Cebus listed an item on their price list in advance of its introduction. The listing declares a limited edition size of 2,000 copies, which seems extremely high considering the studio had never issued an edition greater than 1,000. The size was to be 9 and 3 quarters inches tall by 9 and 3 quarters inches wide with a retail price of $995. It was given a design number of 6,003. Considering the Circus Rider was design number 6001 issued in 1979 and the Humpback Whale was 6007 issued in 1981, it's likely Showtime, the Circus Trio, was designed in the late 70s or early 80s but never released. The artist, Susan Eaton, confirmed she designed the piece several years before it was released and the studio had decided not to use it. Obviously, that decision was reversed by 1990. Porcelain Studios in England had released similar designs and that may have influenced the reverse decision by Cebus. The 1993 price list shows the piece as Horses Circus Trio Showtime. The price and edition size had not changed. It's likely that few, if any of these pieces were ever produced and sold, or at least one of them would have surfaced on the secondary market by now. It's possible the small thumbnail photo the studio posted on its website was actually of the prototype and not a finished piece. That may explain why they've never offered a professional picture in a standard size. That fact may also explain why none to few were ever sold. Until an item is discovered and reasonable pictures can be obtained, we'll be left to speculate on the design details of the actual piece. Next up, we'll consider a couple of non-circus misfits. These two performers look like they could easily be a part of any circus, but don't let their skillful acts confuse you. This first sculpture is often mistaken as a circus piece because he's wearing a clown's costume. Inspired by the Italian opera Pagliacci written in 1892, this sculpture depicts a stage actor whose jealousy drove him to take the life of his wife and another actor during a live performance due to their deceitful and unfaithful behavior offstage. In light of this dark content, it is perhaps best that Pagliacci was assigned to the Portraits in Porcelain collection when introduced in 1985. Kudos to the studio for realizing no grandparents should be faced with explaining who Pagliacci was when showing circus sculptures to the grandkids. Pagliacci was issued as an open edition and closed the following year in 1986. He measures 10 and a quarter inches tall and had a retail price of $325. The second of our two misfits has no explanation for not being a part of the circus collection. Merv, the musical mouse, looks in every way as if he belongs under the big top. However, the studio released Merv in 1990 as part of the Animal Kingdom and Woodlands collection and later added him to the musical menagerie set within the Animal Kingdom collection. Measuring four and a half inches tall, 
MERV was issued as an open edition as design number 6061 and had a retail price of $275. It's hard to believe that a clown and a mouse both missed getting a part in the axe under the big top, but neither of these two were ever part of the circus, even though they were dressed for the part. So far, we've looked at every circus act the studio created except for one. I've saved the best for last, as no circus could ever be complete without a tribute to man's best friend. As we come to our final act, let's take a look at the five Cebus Circus show dogs designed to steal every circus goer's heart. The first circus canine the studio released was in 1977. Dancing Dog Dandy measures 8 inches tall and was released as design number 692. He had a retail price of $145 and was available for two years. He was retired in 1979. Dandy's cane is easily detached if handled incorrectly, and he's often listed for sale with the cane missing entirely. Another area of concern is Dandy's hat. The puffball decorations can be easily chipped or broken off. If purchasing this piece, know what to look for to avoid purchasing a damaged item. The second performing canine introduced in the spring of 1982 was titled Big Top Circus Dog. Big Top was only four and three quarters inches tall but had eyes that could melt any heart. Issued as design number 6011, Big Top was priced at $195 and available as an open edition for two years until his retirement was announced in 1984. In 1986, the studio released Pierre, the performing poodle. At four and a half inches tall and five and a quarter inches long, Pierre was given design number 6051. His introductory price was $225. Like Dandy, the puff ball on the top of Pierre's hat can be easily damaged if handled improperly. Between 1991 and 1993, the studio issued a mate for Pierre. The mold used to create Pierre was used to create Jetain. She was given a different ball and had a red ribbon on top of her head instead of the hat. With the bow, Jetain measured three and three quarters inches tall, but all publications listing Jetain show her at the same height as Pierre. His hat added a half inch to his size, but no one caught this error when Jetain was released. She was given design number 6071 and had an introductory price of $275. On the 1993 price list, Pierre and Jetain were offered as a pair for $475. This brings us to the final performer and the end of our show. The last of the circus dogs is a little fellow we've already seen. Unfortunately, he was not given a name as he was a companion attached to Rumples the pensive clown. Resting over the clown's left shoe, this little fellow nearly breaks your heart as he appears to share in his owner's misery. He may be the last, but he is in no way the least. Thank you for joining me in exploring the fascinating porcelain art the Seba Studio created to celebrate their circus collection. I trust you've enjoyed this presentation and invite you to view the entire series on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe so you can be among the first to know when future videos are released. As we bid farewell for now, I leave you with a review of some of the unforgettable faces from the Cebus version of The Greatest Show on Earth.